So what I want to look at in this video are two different ways to onboard a Windows 10 device to Microsoft Defender for Business. Now, firstly, we're going to need to have Defender for Business licenses in our environment. And if we go to security.microsoft.com, we should see that we have the endpoint options as noted here. And if we go into our device inventory, we will see any of our devices that already have uh, been onboarded. So I've got two here that I already uh, have gone and onboarded. Now the machine that I want to onboard here as an example is a virtual machine. So if we go in and uh, just have a look at the system here, you'll see that firstly, this machine is called a VPC02 and it has not uh, as yet been uh, onboarded. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about two different ways uh, that this machine uh, can be uh, onboarded into the environment. So you'll see here that the machine is called VPC02. Uh, so we again verify that that is not in our list here and we need to get that onboarded so that it can have that protection. Now, the good thing is, is that this onboarding process isn't really uh, about downloading an agent uh, on the device. It's simply connecting the plumbing of the inbuilt Windows Defender that comes with uh, Windows 10 and then mapping that into this uh, security.microsoft.com portal. Now, the first way that we're gonna talk about doing this is we're gonna use uh, policy to achieve this. Now, to use a policy, we're going to also need to have an Intune uh, license to allow us to push out this policy to our devices. Now, once we have that in place, we go to our endpoint.microsoft.com uh, uh, portal. As you see here, now let's go into our devices and double check that the device is in fact Azure AD joint. So this will list out all our devices here. You'll see here, here is the device here. VPC 02, so that has been successfully onboarded uh, and done an Azure AD join, so that is ready to go and any policies will uh, be applied to it. Now if we go to endpoint security here, uh, and then we select the option down the bottom here for Microsoft Defender for endpoint, you'll notice that we have a number of settings here. Now the first setting to check that you have enabled is this connection status. And we've noted here that it is connected and it is enabled. Now you'll need to go and set up this connection if you haven't already. Now the way that we do that is we go back to the Microsoft 365 security console. We scroll down the bottom here to the option for settings, select that. And then from the options that are displayed, we select endpoints. And in our endpoints, what we want to do basically now is select the option here for advanced features. And if we scroll down all the list of options here towards the bottom, we will find an option that is our Microsoft Intune uh, connection. So we want to make sure that that is set to on. If you are in here for the first time, you may also want to check a number of different options there and turn them on if they make uh, sense. Uh, for you to uh, basically do that. So again, the way that I got to that is I scrolled down in security.microsoft.com, went into settings and then went into endpoints and then selected the advanced features and found the integration option to enable uh, for Intune, which again is towards the, the bottom of the list here. Now, once that has been enabled, it might take a little while for your connection status to update and show enable, it needs to be green. You can go up the top here and select the option to refresh uh, that connection uh, to verify that it is uh, operating as expected, but it needs to uh, be green before we can push out a policy, uh, push out um, a policy to do our onboarding. Now, since we're in here, we should also generally go in here and set all these options to on. So we want to, for example, connect our Windows devices to Microsoft Defender for Endpoint. Uh, so we wanna make sure all of those are basically selected. Now down the bottom here, you'll also notice this will give us an indication of any or the number of devices that have been onboarded uh, to Defender for Endpoint using uh, the policies in uh, our Endpoint Manager here. Now, once we have our connection enabled, set up and green, the next thing to do is we need to go in and set up a configuration policy to actually uh, push the client down onto our Windows 10 workstation. Now to do that, we go to devices and then we go into our configuration profiles there. 
and then what we need to do is to create a new profile. The platform that we select will be Windows 10 and the profile type is I'm going to select from a template because there is one that is already pre-configured. If we scroll down, you'll see one here called Microsoft Defender for Endpoint, right? Desktop devices running Windows 10 or later. That's the one we want. So we select that and go to create. We would then give it a name. So let's call this uh, Defender Deploy. All right, and go next. Now under the configuration settings, you don't really need to make any changes here, but I'd recommend you turn on the expedite uh, telemetry option and then go to next. And we now need to assign um, this policy to the devices that we want to onboard. Now this can be done via a security group or users or devices. In this case, to make it simple, I'm just gonna add um, all devices into that. Okay, so that will then apply to the devices and then select next. I'm going to select next again, and I'm going to review and uh, create that policy. Now, once that policy has been created, it's going to be pushed out to those devices when they go in and do a check-in. So if we go into the device status here, you'll see that they're all pending. It's waiting for them to sync the policies. Now, if we have a look back in the properties of the actual policy, you'll notice here that there is an additional option uh, that wasn't uh, selected or wasn't shown when we went and configured the policy. And this is the actual onboarding uh, configuration package. So again, just by creating the uh, policy here, we've also gone in and enabled this onboarding capability. So again, that will be uh, pushed out or pushed out the configuration uh, policy in the file when the device goes in and updates uh, its status. All right, so that may take you know a couple of minutes to uh, a, a little bit longer to go and do that. So that's the first way, the good way about that is it's automated any machines that join in the future that are in the all devices group will then get that policy and be on board. So that's a very hands off uh, once it's all set up and ready to go. Now, the other option is you can onboard devices manually. Now, what we need to do, we go back to our um, security.microsoft.com, again, go to settings, and if we scroll down here uh, on the settings devices, so again, we went to settings and then went to endpoints, and if we scroll down the bottom here, you'll see that there is an onboarding for device management. Now, onboarding for device management allows us to select the operating system we want to onboard, and the way that we wish to onboard it. So you'll see here, we can do the local script and we can also do group policy and so on, we'll get the instructions for doing that. Now, when we select the local script, what it's gonna do is it's gonna give us a capability to download a package, a zip file on the machine and then basically run that and that will do the connection for us. Now that's exactly what I'm gonna do here to speed things up. So let's go back to this uh, virtual machine. Uh, you'll see here that I've already downloaded that package already onto this machine. Uh, you can use the same package across all the machines. It's not machine specific. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna extract all of those files so you can have a look at them and we'll keep it in the downloads directly just to make it uh, simple. All right, so I'll run that. It'll take a moment to extract the file. Basically, you'll see here that it is simply uh, a CMD style uh, command. So if we uh, expand this out a bit, you'll see here that uh, if we actually go in here and edit this, all right, you'll see it is basically just going to uh, run some commands on the local workstation, which is going to do that uh, connection for us between this device and our uh, backend uh, environment here. All right, so I'm gonna run it uh, anyway, because again, it, it uh, has been set up. So you'll see here, here's the actual script that it's gonna run, so you can go in and have a look and see uh, exactly what it's all about. But Rather than doing that, let's go in and actually run this. So what we want to do here is we want to run the command prompt. And I would suggest that the best idea is to run the command prompt uh, as the uh, system administrator, just to avoid uh, any issues when it comes to permissions. So let us run that. And that should bring us to here. Now what we need to do is we need to change to our users directory and we now need to change to the user that it is in, and then we need to change to downloads, I think, uh, is what we want. If we do a directory here, we should be able to uh, see the files. No, we're not in the right uh, directory. 
Okay, so I was in the wrong directory. I needed to be in the super user, not just the user directory. So I've gone into the super user downloads where those files reside. You'll see them here. The one I want to run is this .cmd. So again, to run that, all I need to do is to uh, type in the name of uh, that file, .cmd, and hit enter. That is going to run the script for me. It's going to do the onboarding. Uh, again, we yes to confirm this, hit enter. That is going to run that and it will tell us uh, in a moment when it has uh, completed and onboarded that process. So it's making sure that it has admin privileges, performing the onboard operation, connecting the piping between Windows Defender locally and the Defender for Endpoint Portal. That'll take a moment or two to complete. Let it let us know that it has done that job and then we can go back into the portal and then verify that it has indeed been connected up. Now, we can obviously uh, run both of these, the policy as well as the onboarding script if we want. Again, uh, if the machine has already been onboarded, the script will um, obviously take know that and it will not re-onboard it. So again, there's not going to be any clashing issues here. So again, generally what you want to do is you want to be able to have the policy automatically push out that onboarding for you so you don't have to go through this manual process but if there is a machine for some reason that's causing issues or maybe uh, he's not able to get the policy for some reason again uh, we can go in and just run this script you can download it once and then put it on the machine and run that all right so you'll see here now it's starting the service and hopefully in a moment or two it should be uh, complete and then what we'll do is we'll go back to the security.microsoft.com uh, device inventory console and then we should be able to uh, see this WPC02 uh, in there. So again it's a little bit slow here because it's running on a virtual uh, machine with minimized hardware. Uh, the speed at which this operates will obviously depend on the power of the machine that you, know, you have. All right, so it looks as though it's successfully uh, onboarded our machine to Defender for Endpoint. Um, and the expectation is going to be that when we go back to the inventory, the device inventory and security.microsoft.com, we should uh, basically see that device in there as well. So let us go back there now. So let us go back into security.microsoft.com, find the endpoints heading and then select uh, device inventory here. And again, what we might do is just refresh the page and it won't appear instantaneously. It might take a few moments uh, once that onboarding process has completed for it to register and be displayed uh, in the portal. So again, uh, be patient while that process, but it shouldn't take more than a couple of minutes to do that. So what I'll do is I'll just pause this video and let that uh, process fully complete. We'll come back and verify that it does indeed appear in the device inventory uh, listing here. Okay, we're a few minutes along now and you'll see that the device now VPC02 does appear in our device inventory. I can select it and I will get the um, device card with all the information about that. Now obviously some of that won't be populated just yet. It has to obviously bring that information in over time, but we're confident that that device again is uh, in our list and has been correctly onboarded to our Defender for Business Environment. And again, we just go back to the PC here. You'll see here that the process has completed and all I need to do is uh, select a key to have that uh, scripting process uh, complete. The general advice, like I said, is to run this so you can see if there are uh, any errors, but you could certainly run it uh, unattended if you uh, so desire doing. Now, now that it is onboarded, we just go back here and we have a look at our uh, policy. Again, if we refresh this page, we'll probably find that it's still pending because the device hasn't as yet fully uh, synchronized and taken uh, the policies down here, but eventually uh, it will. And if it didn't have uh, the Defender onboarding capability enabled already, then that policy that we've just created here would allow that. And basically what we did is once we went in and created uh, that policy, it has an option here to onboard the client. So it would take care of it automatically. So if we go and add another machine, say do an Azure AD join, uh, when that new machine comes online and takes this new policy, it will then uh, onboard uh, automatically. But as mentioned, the other approach that we can take if we want to do this uh, manually, again, is to go into security.microsoft.com, go down to the settings option and select the endpoints. And when the endpoints comes up here, go down and find the onboarding option. And under onboarding, you can then select 
a, a local script to use, which is what I ran on the machine in this case to onboard it. Once you have onboarded it, then it will appear in the device inventory after a few minutes, and then you can interact with it. And the security notifications and alerts will start appearing uh, in this console for you. So hopefully that's given you a better idea of the two different methods, which are probably the easiest when it comes to onboarding Windows 10 devices to uh, Defender for Business. You've got the policy option uh, via Endpoint Manager, which we talked about, and you've also got the local script that you can download and apply uh, on the machines if you need to. So hopefully that will help you when it comes to deploying uh, Defender for Business on your Windows 10 devices. Thank you very much for watching this video.